So just before I start, um, the other night uh, you were fortunate to witness some great feats of strength from Frank. Uh, there was the wrench, the heart, and the steel. Um, Frank would really like it if um, some of you have, have said that you really wanted these as the souvenirs. Um, what Frank would really like is he's got a bag that he's going to pass around the tables. Um, we're going to raffle these off. Uh, the money, we, any money that's received, we will split between cystic fibrosis research and for the jab uh, campaign, the uh, court case thing. Yeah, and all you have to do is take any euro bill from your wallet, write your name on it, and put it in the bag. So that bag will be going around the tables whilst I'm doing the presentation. So Sarah ended her presentation by saying how great it is and how for so many of you to speak on the stage for the first time in English, a language that's not your first language. And that's the problem, because the world would be easier if we all spoke English. Before I start this presentation, there's a few terms and conditions that you need to understand before following this presentation. And I'll just give you a few moments to read them. And, and when you've finished, um, if you could just click OK uh, to confirm that. Thank you. So now we can start. So some of you know that I was uh, stuck thanks to the French air traffic control strike the other day. I had two hours sat on the runway in Manchester. And I was sitting there going, do I have enough slides? Do I have enough slides for this presentation? And fundamentally, I am one of the laziest people you will ever meet. Like Robert was tweeting the other day about procrastination. I take procrastination to new levels. Yeah, I've delayed stuff for years that I should be doing. Uh, so I kind of didn't have time to do all the slides. Uh, so I'm going to try something. I'm actually going to draw them. I'm not the most artistic person in the world, but hopefully you will understand. Now, this is a wireframe drawing of a typical, fairly typical website that we might build. And being lazy developers, we, do the, we want to do the absolute bare minimum that we possibly can. And we've done kind of thing. We've got a picture. We've got a like button. We've got the quantity of the items, the price, the date, and some text. And everything's looking good in our design until the French translator comes along and says, Brian, that word like needs to be j'aime. And the problem is, when I put j'aime in that box, it's not big enough. So can you just adjust the design a bit, please, to make it dynamic? So you do that, and you adjust the design, and then you get to languages, some other words that you need to adjust the design. And you get a wonderful thing about word wrap. Word wrap, you can put a lot of text in, you get to a space, if, if it won't fit, it'll wrap on the next line. And that works for almost every language. Unfortunately, with German, you don't put spaces in between the words, you just make the word longer and longer and longer. <laughs> so that, again, breaks your design. So, English makes life easy. We have nice, short words with lots of spaces. So don't do your website in French or German. You'll make your designer's life much easier if you just stick to English. <laughs> now, it's an e-commerce website, so we have a field called quantity. And it's the quantity that we have available. Now, in English, you would write zero items. And when you go from zero to one, it goes to one item. And when you get more than one, it goes back to the plural two items. So that's really simple. You need to have a string for zero, which is items, a string for the singular, which is item, and then you can use that zero one again for all the other numbers that you have. Until your Polish translator rings up. <laughs> and your Polish translator tells you we use something called porcels. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. And with porcels, we have a different ending if there are two, or three, or four. And then the Welsh translator, so you fix all of that, and then the Welsh translator comes along, 
And in Welsh, they have different endings for twos, threes, fours, divisible by fives, there's tens, there's elevens, there's more than 20. You know, it just goes on and on and on. So you kind of go, you know what? Let's just forget about using the word items. <laughs> um, then we have to say how much the item costs. So of course, living in England, I'm going to do the pound sign. It costs one pound. Until your Italian customer comes along and says, well, I don't use pounds, I use euros. OK. The exchange rate's not very good. Uh, so it's one. <laughs> 1 thousand euros. But actually, he doesn't put the euro sign at the beginning. The euro sign has to go at the end. Oh, and we don't use a period there. We use a comma. We don't use a comma there. We use a period. <laughs> And then we go to Path calls me up from India, and Path tells me in India we don't use the same numbering system, and we have something called the lac and the crow. Craw. Okay, so if something costs a million rupees, I would write like that. Of course, the rest of you in Europe, you're going to change that round and get it wrong, and you're going to write like that. But Path isn't going to do any of that. He's going to use the period. And then we have three and the comma. And then we have two. And then two onwards. So the numbering system gets really complicated. And then, of course, I want to say what the date was that this product was released. Now, most of us are going to write 20 seconds of the third. 2015. Until your American users ring up and they say, well, that doesn't make sense because there is no 22nd month. Because we do it <laughs> 03 22. So then you decide, you know what, I'm going to fix this. And you write March 22 which kind of works, but you're still going to get some problems when you, your Iranian users ring up and say, I need to use it in Farsi. And in Farsi, we have a completely different calendar. So you run some calendar conversions, and that's all happy. And then your users in Bangkok ring up, and they tell you another calendar format. So you've got to get that one working. Has anyone used the, the calendar picker in Joomla for anything? Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it really sucks. If you look at the code, the guy who wrote the code, it's on dynark.com, copyright 2004. The site disappeared in 2006, and we still use that code. Why? Because nobody else has done a jQuery picker that uses Farsi and Thai calendar systems. And Jean-Marie won't let us change it until we can support Farsi as well. So it's kind of stuck with that. So life would be so much easier for us, for us lazy developers and designers and site builders, if we can just get rid of all this complication and just write it in English. <laughs> now, when I talk about English, a lot of you talk about something else called American. <laughs> now, 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 Americans follow, there's a very famous guy, he's called Noah Webster. Noah Webster was born in the USA, and he wrote textbooks for schools and universities. Unfortunately, he could not spell. <laughs> so to solve the problem, he wrote a new dictionary so that he was always correct. <laughs> this dictionary is today known as the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. It's the most common dictionary in America. If, you, if anybody plays Scrabble, it's the official Scrabble dictionary in America. And the objective of the exercise of rewriting the dictionary into this version of English was to simplify the difficult words, to spell things as they sound, so that everything would be easier to understand and easier to learn. Now, did this work? No. <laughs> now, why didn't it work? 
There are three movies in the last six years alone in the USA about spelling bee competitions. The spelling bee is a competition where children will be forced to stand in front of their peers and tell you the spelling of certain words. Only in America does this happen. In the, in the people from Spain, have you ever heard of a children's spelling competition that goes on national TV, that has tours, that gets stadium audiences? No. So the spelling bee, Noah Webster's idea of making English spelling easier, fails. But of course, Donald is a very good speller. Now, who could tell me what this word says? That doesn't already know because I've shared it with them. Anybody? So someone have a show a shout out how you pronounce this. This is an English word. Gotti. 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 Okay. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> it, it's actually pronounced fish. <laughs> so you, you're going like, look, goatee? It really says fish. OK, let's explain it. What's that word? OK, so like the GH is the fa. What's this word? Women. Women. The O is the I. And what's this word? So goatee <laughs> is fish. <laughs> but of course, those of us who are native English speakers, we all know that when you see G-H-O-T-I, we say fish. I mean, it's just obvious. But I do appreciate that for those of you where English is your second or your third language, it's a little bit difficult to understand. But the table of the English guys who are sort of over there somewhere, they all knew that it said fish. You know, they all knew, because it's just obvious. English makes more sense. <laughs> but no, big serious, English is not an easy language. And I'm always in awe every time I travel the world at Joomla events and other events to find almost none of you were born speaking English. And yet you can all communicate with me so well and you can present. Now, only in America would you see this sign than now speak English because you're here. And yet, what is the official language of America? Or better still, how many languages does the United States of America have as their official language? Anyone have a guess? Zero. Who says zero? Whoops. Oh, I've jumped past one. I'll come back to it. There are zero official languages in the USA. And it's kind of shown because how many adults in the USA cannot read? 32 million. That's according to the US Department of Education's own figures. 32 million people cannot read. Actually, the number of people who are in prison in America and cannot read is at 70%. And America imprisons, imprisons, imprisons more people than any other nation in the world. But what about this one? High school graduates in the USA who cannot read, 19%. So Noah Webster, you did a really good job simplifying the dictionary. Now, some people in the USA, they don't even understand basic English, and they need to have everything explained with extra words, because these are glasses, not in America. In America, they're eyeglasses. Why are they eyeglasses? Because you might want to put them on your knee, you know? We need to have the instruction to say they are eyeglasses. Now, what is this? This is a bin. Yeah, it's a bin. You put waste paper in the bin, but we just call it a bin. No, it's a waste paper bin, because if we didn't call it a waste paper bin, we might think we put cats in there. Horse riding. Yeah, everybody knows this is what you do on a horse. You ride the horse. You sit on a saddle and ride the horse. But no, the Americans have to call it horseback riding <laughs> because they might not know where the poster sits. They might think that when you go horse riding, you have to hold on to the 
the back of the horse and let it drag you along. <laughs> Trust me, if anybody does go horse riding and you try this, you're not going to enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, and the final one, you know, is a tin of tuna. Or, of course, they can't even call it tuna, it's tuna. Yeah, T O O N A. You know, it's a tin of tuna. Uh, but they don't call it tuna because they might not know what it is. They might think it was a cow. They have to call it a tuna fish. Because you might find one. If you didn't know that tuna was a fish, you might think you could get it in a, a, at the horse ranch where you rode the horse. So, as I said before, it's official. The United States does not have an official language of their own. And in fact, I sent a tweet, and Her Majesty was very kind to reply. It is English, not American English. There is no such thing as American English. There is English, and there are mistakes. Three point six thousand likes, four point seven thousand shares. Oh, uh, this one. Oh, what's she? Oh, oh, Prince Charles, Jimmy Carr, and Alan Carr. They're British. They're British comedians. Prince Charles. He's just a joke. So, so then we want to talk. This is being videoed, isn't it? Can we edit that bit out? I might not get home. Now, this is one of my favourite words. It's one of my favourite fruits. We've had it a few times here at the event. It's a pineapple. Um, who's French? Can you tell me? Can someone French shout out what this is in French? Ananas. Okay, Danish. Ananas. Dutch. Ananas. Hindi. Ananas. Hebrew. Latin. Greek. Fin F Finnish. Yay! <laughs> German. <laughs> Russian. Ananas. Swedish. Ananas. Polish. Ananas. Italian. Ananas. Arabic. Ananas. Icelandic. Ananas. Norwegian. Ananas. Portuguese. Turkish, Ananas. Hungarian, Ananas. Spanish. Pina! Pina! Uh, except if you go to Google right now and say, what is the Spanish for pineapple? Google will tell you it's pina or ananas. <laughs> So who could tell me which of those two words, ananas and pineapple, is the oldest word? Which is the oldest recorded version? Pineapple was first recorded, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, in 1398. And ananas was given the scientific name for a pineapple in 1555. So I'm sorry, English is correct and all the rest of you are just wrong. <laughs> Now, of course, the web is English. This is the man who invented the World Wide Web, Tim Berners-Lee. In fact, of course, now he's Sir Tim Berners-Lee. I mean, you can't get more English than that. <laughs> he's got a double name. He's been knighted by the Queen. The web is English. Now, I went to w 3 Techs to see the content breakdown of languages used on the web. Now, you can see that English is 53.5% of the web and nothing else comes even remotely close. Now, I was only going to show the top four or five, but I was surprised not to see Chinese at the top, because we always hear that Chinese is the biggest spoken language in the world. Well, it is, but they're not on the web. The number of Chinese users of Chinese pages is only equivalent to 1.9%. Now, the other one that surprised me was the Spanish one. Because Spanish actually has more people speaking it than English as their native language. And yet the Spanish one is still only at 4.9%. In fact, German, which nobody really speaks, is at 5.6%. So again, 
why are you wasting your time translating your websites into all these languages that nobody uses? Just use English. It just saves you time. So, so then I started looking if the web is English, is Joomla English, is PHP English, and is CSS English. Well, let's have a look at the six biggest contributors in, in the history of Joomla. Andrew from Australia, Johan from Belgium, Louis from America, Jean-Marie from France, Mark from the USA, and Michael from the USA. So it's no wonder Joomla is full of terrible English, because not one of them is an English speaker. Now, what about PHP? Well, Rasmus Leardoff is the founder of the original founder of PHP. He's from Greenland, lived in Canada, Denmark, and the United States. So he clearly doesn't speak English. We met Zev on the opening tour, because you know he's from Israel, and so is Andy, his colleague. And they're both, their first language is Hebrew. Now we can tell this. Who has seen this error message in PHP? <laughs> yeah? To Paamayim Nikudatayim. Does anyone know what it means? It means you've got, you know, Shirat sticks a hand up at the back. It means you've got an extra colon in there. That's what the error message is. It, it actually says in Hebrew, double colon. Okay, so clearly, if the error messages are in Hebrew, their English is not going to be that great. <laughs> so PHP is not English. What about CSS? Well, CSS was invented by a Norwegian guy whose name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce because I have no idea what that little circle above his name actually does to something. Um, but he's the he was the CTO of Opera. Uh, clearly, he's Norwegian. So he's n was, he, was, he in was he writing CSS in English? No. Let's have a look at this very, very simple four lines of CSS. Now let me highlight the errors. <laughs> four lines of CSS and four errors. So clearly, he wasn't writing in English. Now, I was also looking to actually see why do Americans, why is American used as a language anywhere? And when I found this blog post, it said American is faster. The, the words are shorter because they miss out the U, so there's one letter less. The vocabulary, well, they don't really have a vocabulary, they just do lots of simple words, so we've reduced the vocabulary. Yeah, that makes things easier, which makes text to speech translations for accessibility really easy. And the one that really interested me is that a Z uses less pixels than an S. <laughs> now, if anybody's into Bezier curves, you'll know that to create an S uses a lot more lines of, and, and node points than doing a Z. So it's much faster to use a Z as the Americans. They can't even give their letters the correct name. It's a Z, not a Z. It should be Z. They, so they say that the Z will use less pixels than S. Now, where did I find this? I found this on a website of a company called Zoomf. Uh, they are a web performance company. They're quite a big web performance company. And if you can go online, you can find this. It's quite a long article, goes into a lot of depth, but basically says what I just told you. And I was kind of surprised until I noticed <laughs> the date of the article. <laughs> April Fools. So Joomla. PHP, CSS, I've shown you they're not really written in English, but can we make them English? Well, yes, we can. <laughs> so, a bit of a warning, there is some mind-blowingly awesome CSS code ahead <laughs> that I've written. Uh, so, here is some basic CSS. Well, let's, first of all, let's correct all those spelling mistakes. So, let's put the U's back in. Spell center correct, get rid of the Z in capitalize. So we're getting there. At least it's spelt correctly. But that word important, Sandra, this is especially for you watching it on video. This word important is there. What does it really mean when you see important in CSS? Apart from the fact it tells everybody else looking at it that the designer doesn't know how to do it, um, we see this word important. Well, what we really mean is please. <laughs> Um, then we have the font weight of bold. 
Well, what does bold actually mean? It's not a very descriptive word. It'd be far more accurate to say we want to make the text a little plumper. <laughs> and then we don't have background images. Yeah, they have, we have background photos. It's much more sensible. And of course, you're not going to have a URL ever of the president. It has to be the queen. <laughs> so we've now made, made, we've now made Her Majesty happy and we've fixed the CSS. Now, if anybody's interested in fixing the CSS themselves on their own site, you can go to GitHub to these two uh, projects, uh, Spiffing CSS and Post CSS Spiffing. They will allow you to write your CSS in perfect English, and your browser will accept them, and it will work correctly. The slides will be online later, so you don't need to write it down right now. Now, what about PHP code? Now, I always say I'm not a developer. I've been trying really hard recently, and this is why. This is a fairly simple PHP script. I'm sure there are syntax errors, Rob, uh, Nicholas, so don't point them out. Um, but it's not really British. It's not English. This, let's start with the beginning. Question mark PHP and end with question mark. That doesn't make sense to me. What we really mean is our coding shall begin at once, and that it was good, my, my, and that was it, my good fellows. And of course, with an if-else statement, does that really convey what it means? Well, no. What we really mean is, in case it is true that question, and then you do on the possibility that. <laughs> what about a switch statement? With a switch statement, we've got switch, case, and default. Um, what, what we really mean to say is, what about perhaps an on the off chance? <laughs> Um, and while we're at that, let's get rid of this dollar sign and let's put it there. <laughs> there is a really funny story about why J JavaScript used the dollar sign originally, uh, but I'm going to save that one for another time. So now we've got our coding shall begin at once. We're going to do a try-catch statement. So instead of try and catch, we've got would you mind and actually I do mind. <laughs> and then, of course, as you all know, we have this die message. I mean, every Joomla file begins with jexec or die. I mean, come on, we don't, you've made a mistake. You don't need to die. <laughs> so instead of die, we should be really saying cheerio. <laughs> so now we fix the PHP. As you, Get the big thumbs up from Her Majesty. And again, if you're interested in doing this, you can find a script on GitHub, dzoutner slash British dash PHP, which will allow you to write all your code in British PHP, and it will work. Or, instead of doing that, you can actually download a recompiled version of PHP to run on your server <laughs> and that works natively in correct English. Because, of course, it's open source software, so we can fix the bugs. And American <laughs> clearly is a bug in the language. Now, what about Joomla? I'm going to. So, this is the stuff that's going to blow your mind. So, if I, was to if I was to tell you last year that I am going to rewrite Joomla, you would all tell me that's impossible. You would say it's not impossible for me, but for you, Brian, not a chance. Not a chance can you do that. Well, if you don't try, you will never know. Now, I usually in my slides say that I am not a developer. And the other day, Thomas, who was on the PLT till recently, said, ask me, am I still using that? I am not a developer line because it's not true anymore. It's not accurate. Well, one of the reasons he said that is I started this project uh, on the uh, jumda.org uh, January last year, which was to get together a group of people to make sure that all the language strings in Joomla are in native English. And we have a correct, uh, we have a style guide, we have words to watch, we have an A to Z, all sorts of different things, capitalization rules. Actually, the best benefit for this is not for the English users, it's for those people who are having to use Joomla in another language. They're now getting to be able to have translated content that's consistent. Yeah, so it's really had a big effect. But I started off doing this, 
And as I was doing this part, which involved me looking for the strings and talking to any files, I had to use PHP as well. This is the GitHub statistics for since last jab to this jab. You see Andre here with 470 commits. Congratulations Woo! to Andre. <laughs> and that's really just in two months. Um, but I, I'm not doing too badly. I'm at 274. I'm the number two contributor of, in terms of pull requests this year. Um, pretty much steady across the thing. Well, why has that happened? Well, it's because I was trying to rewrite Joomla in, in correct all the bugs in Joomla. And as you're correcting all the bugs, you find other ones. Every developer knows that. You go to solve one bug, and you find three more. So the ones that were in existing core Joomla, I submitted as pull requests. The rest of them went to this repository on GitHub, Brian Teeman slash Joomla 4 dash Jab 16. This is where I've been working for the last year. 15 days ago, I made it a public repository so that people can actually see it. And you can download this and test it. Now, what are the key features of this version of Joomla 4? Well, first of all, it's only in English. Yeah, because we all agree that English is the only language that anybody should be speaking. 54% of the web, don't waste your time with the rest. That means we've got reduced disk space. We've got much less lines of code. Um, I threw in a brand new admin template as well. Um, it's not based on Bootstrap. It's based on something called Shoelace. But we've got the new admin templates. Um, and of course, there are no bugs. It is bug-free software, completely bug-free software. There are just undocumented features. <laughs> so what I'm going to try and do now, David, is the internet connection working OK? Yeah, so-so. What I'm going to try and do is um, I have um, moved my domain from SiteGround, I'm sorry. Uh, because they needed a VPS so that I could install the British version of PHP. Um, and what I'm going to try and do now is actually upgrade my blog, brian.team.net, to use British correct Joomla 4. So let me just do this. <laughs> Let's see. So let me just... Ah. Okay, let me just log it. Oh, sugar. Need my Yubi key. Okay. Oh. There we are. Okay, so I'm logging in and we're going to go to the components menu and hit Joomla updates, uh, options, and set it to the Joomla next channel and save and close that. And there, ah, where are you going? <laughs> All right, you know it's a video. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to go to update.jumla.org and it's going to try and download Joomla 4 live on my site. And it sort of takes a little bit of while, there's a bit of post. post And as you can see as well, everything on the front end works perfectly. And there it is, all done in British correct PHP, CSS, HTML, and fixes all the bugs that existed in all of them. So now that Joomla is in English, Her Majesty is really happy. And some of you may know, some of you may not. But when the Queen is happy with something and she uses it, she gives it a royal seal. Uh, so that's the one from the Queen, from her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh, and that's the one of the Prince of Wales. So one day, when this finally gets released, hopefully we can get the Royal Seal of Approval. <laughs> yeah, who cares about winning a Webby Award or a, or a Web De Designer Magazine Award for Best Software? This is far more relevant and far more important. But what I really wanted to be saying to you all is that with enough hands, with enough people doing things, we really can make Joomla whatever we want it to be. And with that, thank you very much.